Hi kids and adults and everybody else joining me for some TI Inspire tutorial. This shouldn't take me too long, although getting the data in sometimes takes a while. Um, this today we're going to be doing quad, or in this video we're going to be doing quadratic regression. Quadratic regression. Regression for the most part is done pretty much always the same, but on my website where you can find all these videos, you'll find www. N stands for Newman, K stands for Krauss. Infinity stands for the length of a math class, or unless, unless you're in my mind, an uh, English class or something to that effect. But all this stuff can be found at our website. Quickly go to nkinfinity.com. There's Miss Newman. She, she's an amazing math teacher. If you go up here to uh, New York State Teachers, maybe by the time you get here, it'll also be under students. I haven't done that piece yet. Uh, you go into TI Inspire videos. I give you an opportunity to show you where you can buy it, where I found it at the cheapest price. Uh, $128 seems like a lot of money until you realize you're going to use it throughout high school. And if you go to college, you'll use it throughout college. And it's a pretty cheap investment, especially since we're all spending $100 for sneakers nowadays. Um, here you'll find, oh, I've got videos. There'll be a lot more videos if you come here. If I feel like it requires some kind of explanation on when you might use it, I'll put it on there. Like when I do normal CDF. You know, and you're trying to find the area under under uh, you know normal distribution curve, and you want to use normal CDF. You might want to use that. So anyway, uh, that's not what we're here for today. We are going to be here for just quadratic regression. So I'll slide this one to the right. If you use the calculator, if you oh, I forgot to share it to you, show it to you. But if you use the one off Texas Instruments, it'll give you an emulator that lo an emulator looks just like this. It just runs right on your computer, but you do have to have a computer. So let me read this here. The concentration in milligrams per liter of a medicine in a patient's body as time passes is given by this table. Uh, find the equation for, if you can't see behind my head, find the equation for the quadratic model that fits this. When it says model, they're really just looking for an equation. So on the TI Inspire, in order to do it on the TI Inspire, you're going to want to go to this thing right here. I don't know if I went there too fast. It's this one right here. It, uh, hover over a little bit. I don't know why my mouse is not white, yellow, but it's uh, this is the spreadsheet. So you're going to open up a spreadsheet. I'm not clicking on it. You shouldn't have two spreadsheets open. So I uh, just use your problem. And we'll call this time. Uh, you can use anything you want, so might as well be descriptive. And this one's concentration, so we'll see C-O-N-C. And we'll click OK. Now you'll start entering the data in cells 1. Don't use these. These are for formulas, and that's for something else. We're not going to do that. So it's 0 0.51, 1.52. Most common mistake is forgetting a number or typing it in wrong. Common, 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 common mistake. 0, 78.1, 99 .1, 99 98, 84.4, 50.1, and 15.6. This is not a video on how of course, I forgot one. What did I forget? Zero, 99.8, 84.4. Again, typing it in wrong is one of the common mistakes. I didn't do that on purpose. 15.6, and you got to get rid of this one, please. So this is not a video on how to look at the graphs of these, although I'll show you how to do that later, how to take some screen captures of it and use them maybe in, uh, um, what do you call those things? Um, portfolio that you might have to turn in for whatever math class you're writing. And we'll, we'll get into that and some other things. It'll be a video if you go on the website. It's not there yet, but it will be at some point on how to save images um, actually on the calculator itself and on this emulator. Uh, and the emulator, I'm sure your teachers will allow to use it. Anyway, let's get going. So we go into menu. You've typed in the values. Oh, after you've typed in the values, you want to be on this cell. You want to make sure it's blue. Look at the difference. You see how that one's white? And you see how it's, it's, it's waiting for you to type something in. So if I were to go to menu and statistics, all of this stuff is grayed out for the most time, except for distributions. But for the most part, it's all grayed out. I don't want that. By the way, if you ever get in a menu you don't want, just hit escape, escape, escape. So the problem is you're looking, it's looking for data entry. You really just want to turn it blue. That means it's just sitting there. It's not waiting for anything. It's just sitting there. So now I can go into menu, go into statistics, 
going to statistics, going to stat calculations, and they asked us to do a quadratic model. So we need to go down into quadratic, not quartic. That's a fourth degree. Quadratic, that's a second degree polynomial. Don't want to go into quartic. That's so, some, another day. So go into quadratic regression. X list is the independent variable. In this case, the independent variable is time. Time just keeps going. Now, the concentration depends on how long it's been going for. So the concentration is the dependent variable. So the X list is the, don't pick them just because they're in order. You'll be wrong, and you'll get it wrong every time. So time is the independent variable. Concentration is the dependent variable. And, we'll and then leave these blank. We didn't have a frequency list. Uh, um, oh, save regression equations, whatever. And we didn't have a frequency. We'll just click OK. All right. Now, in this cell right here, they're going to tell you what the equation looks like. Do you see how you can't see everything in that cell? You can't see everything. So if you look down here, do you see down here? It shows you what all the things you can't see. It's like, oh, there it is, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, that should come as no surprise to you. By the way, the one thing that is missing is the y equals. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Common mistakes, not putting in these values correctly. Second common mistake is forgetting the y equals. It does have to be an equation. See where it says an equation? The next thing that common mistake or stupid thing that kids do is not showing the user or the grader that you actually showed some work. So you need to write these values down. I don't care what it says to round to. Write down all of them. Now, I can only see 2.14, but down here I can see it all. See it down here? So down here, I can see all of it. So it's negative 56.2142857142827. Woo, click on the next one. 139.3128571. And finally, the last one, 9.35. <laughs> well, that's kind of boring. 9.35. Well, now I can come back over here and it says round the nearest thousand. Well, this one I can't round a thousands place, so I will round them all. The thousands place, by the way, I'm going to highlight it, is the third decimal. So you got to decide if you're going to change those or not. So I probably will, we'll see. Y equals, don't forget the Y equals, negative 56.21, and the four stays, X squared, because it's squared, plus 139.31, and we have to change it to a 3 because there's an 8 next to it, x, plus 9.5. Oh, 9.35. All right, let me do one more example of this, and then I think that should be enough. Uh, by the way, if you're doing multiple problems, it is always in your best interest. Let me, I'll be right back. I always say I'll read right back, and it's really only one second for you, but it's a couple of minutes for me. i got to save this video over. If I go past 11 or 12 minutes, sometimes my voice doesn't quite match my mouth. So anyway, what I was saying before I was rudely interrupted is, if I go back in here, watch what happens. If you go back into here and you say, okay, I'm going to do another problem. And does this problem have time? I tried to, I think I picked, yeah, so this one has time as well, right? So let me click over there and I'll do this one over there. So this one has time as well. And you say, okay, I'm just going to go into my spreadsheet. So I'll click on this. I got a new tab. That's cool. I say, okay, I'm going to call this time. And then I want to call this one depth. What? What What happened? I didn't type anything in there. See, the problem with it is, is all of these values over here are assigned to time. So time is this column of values. So if you go over here and now I want to use time again, it's going to think, oh, you mean these values? So if you're ever going to do multiple problems, always hit the red X, choose don't save, don't save, go back in and make sure when you're doing regression, you're always using 1.1. Otherwise, you're going to have problems and don't want problems. So now if I type in time, the old time values are gone and I can put new values in. Okay, so that's just a little warning for you all. Depth, all right, let me put these in. We're going 0 to 7. 0, 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So much easier on the computer, actually. For many things, it's easier. Zero, uh, negative 101, negative 191, negative 266. Common mistake, not putting the numbers in correctly. Uh, negative 300, negative 274. Oops, almost did it. 274, negative 183, and negative 60. You know, and you should check those. I think I got them in right, but you should check those. Common, common mistake. Again, it wants a quadratic model. Here it is, quadratic model. So remember, we want our blue box here. We don't want it to look white. We want it to look blue. So if you ever get to the white, you just hit the enter button, and then you just go back up and say, I want you to be there. Go into menu, statistics, stat calculations and quadratic regression. I know quartic regression looks a lot like it. Make sure you're picking quadratic regression. Again, my independent variable is time. My dependent variable is depth. And click OK. So basically then it's the same thing as we had before. There's our equation. Uh, this case, we should be using D of M is equal to. Now, because they told you you want to use D M and DMM, you should be using those. So your equation is going to be AM squared plus BM plus C. You need to still tell me what A is unrounded, B is unrounded, and C is unrounded. So click on that. 20.5, oops, excuse me, 9.58. 9583 repeating. Negative 159.9583 repeating. That's really weird. And here we go again. 21.2083 repeating. That's interesting. Okay. So now I'm ready. Come over here. I'm ready to write my model. My model is going to be D of M equals, and again, be careful, this is what they want, this is what you should give them. D of M is equal to, we're around in the hundreds place, so let me highlight those decimal places, see if we're going to change them. Looks like we're changing all of them. So D of M is equal to 20.96 M squared minus 159.96 M plus 21.21. And that, my friends, is quadratic regression. Very simple. I'll have more on quartic regression, exponential regression, logarithmic regression, quartic regression, if I said that. All, I'm going to be doing all those regressions eventually. If you don't see something you like or if you want to see something different, let me know. Just shoot me a quick email. Okay. Catch you guys on the flip side. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. It helps me out, guys. Thanks a lot.